All right, guys, thanks for coming here today. This is Augustus 5 6 with a speech called RFID Hacking Live Free or RFID Hard by Fran Brown. Um, guys, if you could remember to badge out for valuation, your, speecher, your speaker really appreciates the feedback. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Fran. Turn this on. Is it on? Oh, how's it going, everybody? Good, good stuff. Uh, welcome to RFID Hacking. My name's uh, Fran Brown. I'm a managing partner at Bishop Fox. It's a security consulting company that uh, helps organizations secure their networks and applications. You may know us by our previous name, Stack and Lou. We just rebranded. Uh, pretty excited about that. Um, have some uh, very fun and interesting stuff for you here today. Um, I know that they said that the press wanted to see demos uh, early in the first 10 minutes or something, so. Uh, I'll kind of jump right into it in a second. But I just wanted to quickly go over what I'm going to cover today. Uh, basically about a year ago I was doing a penetration test of a uh, electric utility um, and I needed to get access to their SCADA network uh, and it was only accessible from two different buildings. So um, this research is kind of born out of necessity. Uh, I needed to break into a building is kind of how I uh, got into the, the uh, whole RFID hacking. So I knew I needed to break into a building. Uh, and I started looking for resources out there. Unfortunately, there's no hacking exposed RFID. I think RFID security, the book, is like 10 years old or something. Um, and I started watching past Black Hat presentations and uh, reading everything I could. And uh, after hours and hours of that, I, I realized I was no closer to really achieving my objective of breaking into this building. Um, uh, a lot of the tools never really came to fruition that people have presented on in the past, uh, were never released. Um, a lot of the talks are uh, more theoretical and I just wanted, I need to break into a building. What are the tools that are available to me? What are the techniques I need to learn so that I could steal badge information and break into this building? And that's kind of what this talk is focused around. Uh, it's more a practical guide to uh, RFID penetration testing. Um, as well as I want to finish up strongly with uh, some defenses. Most of the talks that I've seen kind of uh, gloss over the defenses. It's kind of like tough luck. Uh, so I will make sure to uh, cover defenses so um, you know what you could do about some of these issues. Uh, with that, I'm going to, uh, I'll go through uh, the primary existing RFID hacking tools that are out there uh, that I think should be part of your toolkit and what you can use them for. Uh, I'm also going to go into how you go about stealing badges, replaying them, uh, cloning them, um, uh, then attacking the badge readers directly, uh, bypassing the card. Um, and then we'll get into our custom solution uh, which I'm about to pull up now uh, and then the defenses. So yep. oh, he switched me back in. So I'm going to pull up a video right now. Thank you, optimal resolution. And what this, what we're going to see here is, I'm going to quickly go through, uh, I think that an RFID penetration test can be broken down into three simple steps, uh, three basic steps. Step one, we're going to try to steal someone's badge information uh, off them without getting caught, without them suspecting. Whether it's at the local Starbucks or at the smoke area near a building we want to break into, we want to steal their badge information that's on their person. Two, we want to make a copy of their badge, uh, uh, an identical card, so that we can then, three, walk into the front door of the building and break into whatever building that we are uh, trying to uh, get access to. Uh, and with that, out of those three steps, there were uh, plenty of tools available for all of them, but I noticed that the, uh, the tool that was really lacking the the area that was really lacking the most was that first step. That first step of stealing the badge information without the other person knowing. And uh, I watched, you know, years of presentations and um, uh, formulated my theory of what I like to call the ass grabbing uh, technique of RFID hacking where you see these presentations and I'll, I'll show that in a little bit where, you know, the people have their Proxmark antenna and they're walking around grabbing people's asses um, and saying look how easy it is to steal people's badge information. Now, I didn't want to get caught in the job that I was doing, so I didn't want to risk walking around, you know, uh, or trying to get a uh, sexual harassment lawsuit brought against me just to try to get a badge. Um, so this is the, the focus of our uh, research and 
uh, the circuit boards that we just gave out are going to uh, show that. So first I'm going to quickly illustrate what I mean by the, the limitation on distance for this first step. Most popular um, we have it's plugged into my laptop. This is the Proxmark. Uh, this is a RFID hacking tool you can buy, by far the most popular. Um, we have it's plugged into my laptop here um, via USB and then via another cable, there's the antenna. Uh, and we see that right now we are running the Prots Mark and we, are ha we have it in listening mode. It's, it's trying to read right now. So as we can see, it still does not see the card even at this range. So I'll keep going down, keep going down, getting closer to the antenna. Closer still until there we go. 6339. We had to be within probably about an inch right here before it actually starts picking up the badge information. 6339. So this is about how close you have to get to somebody on their person to be able to effectively use this tool to steal their information, which is a little too close for comfort if you ask me. So how many people here are familiar with the Proxmark, the tool that's up there? It's pretty much the you know, the number one tool that's out there, uh, the one tool you could buy, but it's a perfect illustration of how many of you, how many people here have done a uh, physical penetration test and targeting RFID? Okay, not too many, a handful. And this is kind of one of the major points because it's not easy to do uh, currently uh, with the tools that are out there. But primarily you would see people with that antenna, with the CD on the end, you know, running it down their sleeve with the CD uh, looking antenna in their hand and trying to go up to people's back pocket and you know literally get within an inch. You saw how close you had to be, uh, and that's a severe limitation. Once I once I came to that conclusion, I was like, "This sucks. This isn't doable. This this kind of penetration test isn't doable. I'm going to get caught in two minutes." And you know, in expressing the risk to the, our customer, I'm going to tell them it's not really that risky because you know the chances of getting caught are high. So I thought to myself, "Wouldn't it be nice if I could?" have a long distance uh, RFID hacking tool. So show a quick video of that. Wouldn't it be great? Yeah. And I'll show you this, I'll show you this slide uh, in full in the presentation here and we'll get to the deck. Let's see, keep it here. So uh, just to set this up again, um, how many people are familiar with uh, the ProxClone website? And there's a few other websites that kind of talk about a similar idea to what we're doing here. Um, basically in doing the RFID research, I noticed that people might put pictures of some custom solution that they did and be like, you know, look what I did. This is awesome and it could do this and then not release any code or schematics or anything that could be useful to you in any way whatsoever um, to actually do it yourself unless you have an electrical engineering degree. Um, so leaving you to uh, do what I had to do here um, and come up with my own solution. One thing I want to note about this as we get into it is that with those PCBs that I gave out and later today on the website, I'll be releasing the uh, Arduino code, the fritzing diagrams, uh, the exported uh, extended Gerber. So you can mail, uh, you could send the files into some of the print circuit boards for like 30 bucks um, and, uh, and have these printed out and be up and running. Uh, with this kind of tool on your own uh, with very, not super easy, but a lot easier than it's been in the past. Um, so I'm just going to quickly show how our tool could be used to steal badge information from a little bit further away. If there was a tool that took that step one that allowed us to secretly steal this. Oh, also, any, any Dr. Horrible fans uh, in here? A couple, a couple of those, yeah. Information without having to go up and grab somebody's butt. So um, as a crazy uh, random happenstance, we do have such a tool. 6339 again, we look to my left here. This is what I'm uh, calling the TASTIC uh, long range RFID stealer uh, from my company Bishop Fox. And we see here it's just a weaponized commercial reader. You guys can see it here. So we'll go ahead and throw that up there and you can see it's a 26 bit card. Run it again, Soda Code 113 and card number 6339. So it uh, outputs it to the screen uh, nice as well. I'm clearly um, uh, a few feet away uh, right now. Uh, and with this, 
I can steal the information without having to go and grab somebody's butt. So taking a little quicker look at what, uh, what this tool is actually doing and how the circuit board comes into play, I'm going to turn this off. And we can see that it is about a foot by a foot um, and only an inch deep. Extremely light, portable, have a missile switch on the back here, which I was using um, to uh, not accidentally turn it on, things like that. Uh, it's completely uh, self-powered and portable. So what you would do is take this, put it in your messenger bag or backpack um, or briefcase, walk around with it, uh, walk by somebody from up to three feet away and pick up their badge information, uh, which is much better than you know, grabbing butts up here. Um, it's, not only does it write into the screen, but we actually see uh, it's easy to uh, take apart here. Just a single screw in the front. Thumb screw that I can just twist out. And take the lid off. And what we have here is, this is a long distance uh, commercial uh, badge reader, the kind that you would find in parking lots. Um, so that you don't have to get out of your car. You can just roll it on your window and reach your arm uh, out of the car window and hold your badge out and get it picked up. So it's meant to be picked up from several feet away. Um, all of this was in here to begin with. All I did was add the LCD screen, the batteries to self-power it, and you will recognize this circuit board here, uh, which you have without all of the things already installed. But um, it has all the logic, the code, uh, behind it will be on our website for you to download as well. And this is just an Arduino uh, controller that you can buy online on Amazon, Radio Shack, um, as well as just some uh, resistors and a few things there you can pick up anywhere. Um, we have de we'll have detailed instructions on the website on how to recreate this, uh, which is our main goal here. Um, and finally, we see we have a uh, micro SD card. Uh, which not only was it writing it, but it was actually writing it to the SD card in cards.txt, the text file. So, pretty cool, right? So this tool, um, you can see, I got a few things in my bag already. If it's easily in a briefcase, a messenger bag, something like that, you can just turn it on. Um, uh, it beeps when you first turn it on, so do it in the parking lot or something, but after that, uh, it's completely silent. And you could just walk by people, um, and as long as you get within a few feet of them, uh, you can effectively pick up any badge information that they have on them. Um, I like to have if you have the solder strap, if you're not sure where they have the card on them, if it's in a pocket or a pocket, you can kind of like walk by them and take it off as you're doing it and get the full body range from uh, all pockets. And in doing this, it's a, it's a pretty simple solution uh, in weaponizing an actual badge reader. It solves that problem of that first of three steps, stealing the information to begin with. Um, we've been extremely successful in using this uh, ever since on, uh, on pen tests since I first made it. Um, I've been able to train some of our staff in 10 minutes. Here's the on button. It's on the back. <laughs> put, it, put it in there um, and, you know, open the text file. Uh, so, you know, it's, 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 it's all about making this e – people out there have their own custom solutions. My goal here was to make this easy and repeatable so that security professionals and large organizations who don't know a thing about radio frequency or have electrical engineering degrees but they do have to perform penetration tests and they want to illustrate the risks of some of these technologies to their management to make it so that they don't have to spend a year you know, uh, studying this stuff to do it and get up and running quickly. Um, the last video I have here uh, is step two. So now that we have this solution, uh, let me save the battery actually. Yeah. So now that we have step one, stealing the badge information, it writes to the screen, also puts it on this SD card. The second step is cloning the badge. Took this SD card, or micro SD card. I'm just going to pop it into my laptop. It should come up over here. So we should see the SD card uh, came up that I pulled from our 
long range RFID sealer. Check that out and we see that there's a single file, cards.txt, just a simple text file. I click on that and we see here, uh, we uh, scanned it a few times. It's a 26 bit card. Here is the uh, hexadecimal notation for that uh, badge information. Uh, we actually decoded for you. It's facility code 113 and badge number 6339, as we saw printed on the card. And we actually have the binary as well. So now we've successfully uh, completed step one. We, we've taken this silently stealing badge information and made it a, a realistic possibility where we can, from three feet away, casually walk by you and steal the information. Now that we have that, we can use tools like the Prosmark to quickly uh, create a cloned fake version of your badge uh, so that we can go use it. Uh, and that is extremely easy. It's a single command. We already have the Prosmark uh, set up here. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and copy the hexadecimal version of this badge, 6339. Click copy. And we're gonna come back to our Proxmark here. Now the Proxmark is in read mode right now, so by hitting this button, I'll stop that. So now uh, we have the badge information from our tool, uh, just this hexadecimal uh, value. And what we're gonna do is take this programmable T557 card uh, which is a uh, programmable card that doesn't read no, like I have anything the right now. Of a three year old. So um, and we can app. turn this, uh, this is just a sticky note. It's clearly not the 6339 badge. Let's put a uh, post-it on there. Uh, it's programmable. So I just lay that on top of the uh, antenna here. And uh, if we look uh, right here, all I'm gonna do is type in LF, for low frequency, hit, because it's a hit card, clone, space, and then I'm just gonna paste in that value we took from our cards.txt file. And I click enter. And we see cloning tag with that value that we stole, done. So right now, this card is functionally an exact duplicate of the card that we stole. 6339. So let's test it out. Um, so we have our original again, uh, badge number 6339. Um, we have our, the original card, 66339. And it's a prox card too. You go over here, 6339 still. Now we take our clone card, this card which is clearly not that same card, it just has my sticky note on it that we just programmed. When we come up to it, badge 6339, facility code 113, 26 bit card. So now we've successfully stolen and now made a fake copy of this person's badge. And that's, that's as easy as it is. I mean, at this point, um, the, the real limiting factor that it stopped most people from doing RFID penetration tests in the past was that first step. Now it's simple. Use this tool, walk by a person near the building you want to break into, take the micro SD card out of it, copy and paste, it's a single command to write it to a programmable file and now you have an exact copy of a card of an employee at whatever building you're trying to break into. Um, pretty simple. We're pretty cool? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Has, has anyone here built their own kind of solution like this uh, on their own? No? Okay, good. And use the card then. Uh, so with that, I'll get into the actual presentation. So we saw, we saw the basic gist at this point. What two tools would we need to be able to pull this off and do a successful pen test? So, and breaking it down, I, I don't want to do too much background information, just what you need to know. We're talking about uh, low frequency here. 
Uh, most badge readers for physical security are still low frequency. I saw the article, I got slashed at it and people were putting links to high frequency long range antennas and you know we're, we're focusing on just the low frequency stuff uh, when it comes to this. Um, and why are we doing that? Uh, people say I've seen black hat talks in 2007, 2006 about things like this. Uh, what's new? Um, you know there's, there's a few things that are new but one thing that isn't new is that we saw before we knew that if you're using low frequency RFID batch systems that you're insecure. Um, but it's, it's, it's very much like web application security ten years ago. Uh, you could talk to managers and, and people who make decisions about purchasing, about SQL injection to your blue in the face um, and no, no serious budget or effort would be put into uh, you know fixing things like that until uh, penetration testers came out and could actually illustrate uh, what could really happen. Um, and that's how you start to begin change. But since we haven't had these tools uh, to make this easy, in fact, it's uh, most of the, and the Proxmart, if any of you guys are familiar with the Proxmart, it seems like some have, uh, the tools are, th that's the nicest packaged one that you can get. Um, and it's still a nightmare to get set up and running. Um, and it crashes all the time. And uh, there's 80 different trees of the, the code behind it. Uh, everyone just committing. Th so it's kind of, uh, there's, it's not something that you can easily get into. Um, historically. I'm trying to change that now. Um, and with that, we've seen uh, this person has to be kicking themselves now um, at Hig Global for uh, this blog post that they just recently posted. But basically saying that uh, even to this day, in 2013, that almost 80% of physical security systems are still this old insecure technology that we could easily uh, fool. And that they fully recognize that there's no security around this whatsoever. Um, and it's, uh, and they go on, um, that's the actual blog post, uh, to list some of the reasons. Some of them it's ignorance on the part of uh, the people who are making decisions. If you think about it, these are IT systems that aren't going through the traditional IT uh, structure. They're being uh, purchase decisions made by physical security guys. You know, guys who are ex-cops, things like that, not from a hacker background uh, typically. So this kind of being outside of that uh, has affected the way that the purchasing goes. And uh, for the most part, the RFID badge systems in buildings now are products that people bought in the early 90s. They have about a 20 year life cycle. Um, so HID fully recognizes that these things aren't secure and they said, yeah, I know, we sold it to you 20 years ago. Uh, you're more than welcome to upgrade to some of our more se uh, secure solutions. But um, the main motivation behind this talk and these tools was that, and, and in releasing them uh, to try to make it easier for security professionals, is that, and just looking at the timeline, and uh, Chris Pagent's talk in 2007 said, if you're using this, it's for your doors, you're insecure. It was out there, everybody knew about it, and to this day, 80% of people in 2013 are still using it. So we've made absolutely no progress uh, whatsoever in doing anything about it. And my theory is because um, the tools have been lacking to pull off successful penetration tests and, and really convey uh, these risks to the people who make the decisions um, to, to upgrade them. So in getting into it, uh, this is based from a uh, white paper on how a hit card is read. Um, and looking at the basic setup, it's, it's simplistic, but it also gives us an idea of what our attack points are as well. So in this demonstration and the main focus, we were attacking the card. That was our starting point. We're going after an employee in Starbucks and we're trying to copy their card. So the card, um, the card basically when it gets near a reader, it just starts singing out anywhere between 26 and 37 ones and zeros. That's it. And the reader, uh, which uh, it looks just like one of these, uh, it does no logic whatsoever. It just one powers the card that gets close enough to it and then it listens for those 26 to 37 ones and zeros and passes it along to the controller in this Wigan protocol. And technically all I'm doing with this Arduino is tapping into that output as if I was a controller. So instead of running the signal with the badge number out the back of it and into a building to a controller, I'm just piping it right to the Arduino, acting like a controller myself. Um, and it's how we're getting that badge information. And then lastly you have the, uh, uh, the controller is making all the access decisions and then you have a PC that some physical security guard sits at where you issue new badges, uh, you monitor the cameras and things like that. So in looking at this, this is how it works at a high level and it also gives us a high level picture of if we're going to do a penetration test, these are the four things we'd want to target. First we want to go after the cards, that's going to be the easiest. 
Um, if all of a sudden everybody in a target company starts wearing uh, uh, RFID blocking wallets and you know things like that, and they step up protecting the card, then we'll be forced to move on down the line uh, and attack the readers and attack the controllers directly, um, which is uh, pretty cool as well. Um, this is just illustrating. Uh, there's a lot of products that HID has. They make the uh, the bulk of these. Uh, they pretty much have a monopoly on uh, bad systems, um, and they do make more secure uh, products as well. And they're still just basically trying to get this information across that identifies you as a user. And in looking at this, in doing the research when I was doing this pen test, I couldn't. The simplest questions that I would have. It took me forever. It was the 125th Google hit to find the answer. Or I'd find it in a product manual or, you know, in, in some random spot. Uh, one of them was what's written on the badge? What's written on the outside of these badges? And it's not always the same. And if I took a picture of somebody's badge, right, you know, Google Images or something, is that enough information for me to make a fake version of their card just based visually on what's on there? And um, I finally found this in a, in a uh, you'll, you'll notice most of them have like one set of no one number and then a, another longer number uh, on the back. You guys probably can't see it but you can see it up there. And uh, one of them is your card uh, ID number which is only part of the information that's being broadcast. Um, and then the other is just a sales order number. It has nothing to do with you as a user whatsoever. And so if you want to buy more cards, when you call up a sales guy, you read that number off to him so he can print you more. It has nothing to do with authentication or getting into uh, the, the door or anything like that. Um, it took me forever to find that. So what this is, is again, 26 to 37 ones and zeros get sung out by these cards. And the way that's interpreted is uh, what they call a format which is your card ID number which is printed on there and a facility, facility code and sometimes a site code. And the answer to that question, could you by visually, if it's a simple 26 bit card, uh, you could take that badge number and then just try all 100 or 255 facility codes and you could theoretically brute force a badge just by seeing someone's picture and physically seeing it on the card. Um, now this was one of the most confusing things uh, when I first started getting into this. Um, was what information is on the badge. You'll see standard 26 bit, standard 26 bit, uh, corporate 35 bit. You'll hear about 44 bit cards. Um, when you're doing everything in the Proxmark, which is the main tool, it's 10 hexadecimal, which is only 40 bits. And it's all the same cards. And um, it's, uh, it got a little confusing there, uh, at least for me. Is anybody else confused by what's on the card? No? Nah? You guys all got it? You guys are sharp. Okay. Um, so the quick break, and I actually found the breakdown in a product manual for the reader. Um, but the way it is is when you put a, a card up to a reader, it sings out 26 to 37 ones and zeros. That's what it does. It's always 44 bits on the card itself. It's only singing out part of it. Always 44 bits. And the first uh, hexadecimal is always zero, so it usually gets dropped which is why you have only 10 hexadecimals for 40 bits because it's, they're just dropping the leading zero. And this is where I found it. I actually scanned it in from a product manual. You can see there this is a standard uh, 26 bit card. Uh, the right half is the 26 bit standard. That's the whole 44 bits on the card. You see the uh, first seven numbers on every card are always six zeros and a one. Every single card. Six zeros and a one which is why the first digit is always a zero and gets dropped when represented in hex. Um, and then you have ten zeros, a parity bit, and then your 26 bits. So when people issue you a 35 bit card or, you know, as you guys are upgrading, all it's doing is taking advantage of that ten zeros and working its way over. It's just taking that buffer. But it's always 44 bits on the card itself. Um, and you actually see with the leading zero there in hexadecimal in the manual, it didn't drop it. It took me forever to find that. <laughs> um, and uh, we're focusing on security badge, uh, physical security badge systems here, but uh, as you can imagine, these type of attacks and tools and techniques uh, are only going to get more interesting as you know, we're starting to see credit cards with RFID finally uh, starting to take place in the United States. I know they had it in Europe for a while. Uh, anyone here a Disney fan? No? Disney World, Disneyland? They're going everything RFID from 
your fast pass to your getting in the door um, to your hotel room to buying stuff at the My Magic Plus. Uh, so that'll be interesting research. Research. Um, uh, in your passports, in animals, in hospitals. Uh, if I look tired in those videos, it's because I was. Uh, I have a newborn baby, my first at home. Um, it's uh, interesting to tell mom that I need to go dress up like Dr. Horrible and shoot a video about RFID hacking. Um, but uh, in doing that, it was, there was tons of RFID all over uh, that the nurses were using to keep tabs on the baby and logging into systems. Um, so uh, it's only going to keep showing up more and more. Uh, it's really starting to take off now. So into the nitty gritty. This is your approach. This is the method methodology I described. Three simple steps. Steal the information off somebody's will buy them. Take the information and create a fake version. And then enter the building. And you don't want to be in the building any longer than you have to be. So plant a backdoor device like a pwn plug. And uh, I'll get in a little bit more on that in a second. But that's ‑‑ and then you can go home and maintain internal access, um, you know, from the comfort of your own home. It's uh, pretty simple but it's, it's the effective methodology. And this is what you saw in the video. Um, these are from slides, from YouTube videos, from uh, various presentations I've seen from the past six years and they all consistently um, say, oh, look how easy it is to steal uh, people's badge information and they always have uh, pictures like this which are not intended to be funny I don't think but I found them funny. Um, as you can see, uh, Jonathan West, who's the creator of the, the proxy, is he in here? Is Jonathan in here? Uh, much props to you, but I mean, and looking at that picture, if he was doing that to you and walking around your uh, corporate campus uh, grabbing people's asses, um, how long before you noticed, would notice and, uh, and call the security guards on them? Um, we even see, uh, you know, and, and essentially you see these people with these wires coming down their sleeve an antenna about the size of a CD typically and they're walking up trying to get within a centimeter or two uh, of people's badges. Um, that's where we were. Uh, the ‑‑ so this is the couple tools you'll want to have in your arsenal. So the Proxmart is probably the best one that you could buy out there um, and e even with this limitation of distance, uh, it's a really cool tool. You saw that we used it to make the actual fake version of the badge. Um, so it can ‑‑ uh, read cards, it could simulate them, uh, it can create fake versions, there's all kinds of cool things that you could do with the Proxmark. Um, you can uh, ‑‑ there's different pricing models but the nice prepackaged version that you see there, uh, the most expensive one is uh, $3.99. And um, also with the, uh, the Proxmark, uh, another cool thing is being able to brute force badges. So there's this tool, uh, Prox Brute, which is actually custom firmware for the Proxmark. Any guys used Prox Brut before? Anybody? Okay, so this is from a guy, McAfee, uh, Brad uh, Antonovic. Is Brad in here by any chance? Yeah. Keep an eye out for him. Uh, Brad, Brad's done some uh, really cool research in the, the last year or so and he's created this uh, Prox Brut uh, custom firmware that you could load onto the Proxmark. So what this is is you notice the badge numbers um, besides the facility code and things like that, say you went to Starbucks and you picked up the badge of uh, a normal employee uh, and it got you in the front door. But you also wanted to try to badge in and get access to a data center or some other hot, more restricted um, area. Uh, what you could do is you already have most of the badge structure numbers that you need and you only need to increment numbers one at a time in a certain spot. So maybe I just got a, uh, a secretary's badge to get in the front door but then I can brute force the next card number and the next card number and the next one until I get a card number that will let me in the data center or some other secure area. So um, it's a pretty cool and uh, useful tool as well. Another reason to get yourself a Proxmark um, so that you could load that on there. Any questions so far? Yeah? All right. Um, the question is how long does it take to do the brute forcing? Um, with that particular tool, that's actually doing it um, uh, not over the wire, it, it's doing it over uh, actually broadcasting. That takes a long time. But fortunately, there's usually not that many badges and uh, I think it's ‑‑ one, sec one second per card? Somebody said about one second per card. It's not 
it's not going to be able to go through a lightning fast, um, but you know, it is a little slow. So you do want to do it when no one's around uh, if you're going to do something like that. Um, we'll see in a little bit some tools that we're actually jacking into the reader and doing over the wire, which are significantly faster to do that kind of brute forcing. So, oh, um, uh, besides the Proxmark, uh, another really popular one are the RF uh, idiot scripts from Adam Lari. Uh, spoken at Black Hat uh, plenty of times. Um, he uh, has a recommended hardware that you could buy, but basically he's accumulated uh, over the years a number of Python scripts that do all kinds of various RFID hacking related activities. Um, that he just keeps adding to this uh, RF idiots uh, uh, org tool. And uh, the one convenient thing about this is the Proxmark and most of the tools that you would get are difficult to get set up and running, um, or they can be anyway. Uh, this comes preloaded on backtrack. Um, so all you have to do is plug in the USB of the uh, antenna and fire up backtrack, and you could be up and running very quickly. Um, so there's some pretty cool stuff there to check out. Um, have any of you guys seen this before? I actually came across this. I haven't seen it in any security presentations. I came across it when I was looking at product manuals. This is great. One of the other questions I had is this is clearly a prox card too. It says it right real big on there, right? Um, and I can see the badge information on the back. Now I mentioned as an example that I like Disney and Disney is moving everything over to RFID. Well, the RFID badges that they give out don't have any visual information on them that would give you any indication as to what type of technology it is um, so that you would know what type of tool you would need to read it. So um, in situations where you don't know what kind of card it is, maybe you found one and, you, and you're trying to understand it, maybe um, you uh, at your parking garage uh, you have a uh, RFID system to get in um, for your you know, local campus or something, you want to see what technology they're using so you can get free parking or you know, whatever you guys do in your own time. I don't know. Um, this is great. Basically it is uh, two USB keys on a key ring, one high frequency and one low frequency. Just USB, you just plug it in, no software required. Uh, you just open up notepad and, and uh, hit scroll lock and it starts running as you can see up there. And it will identify uh, not only what the actual card information is, but it'll tell you exactly what type of technology it's using, um, which can be uh, extremely important in, in uh, getting moving fast with these things. So you try the low frequency. If that doesn't work, you try the high frequency, and it, it's a great way to identify what kind of card uh, you're looking at if you don't know. Pretty cool. From RF Ideas. Um, and finally, um, with all those, we have our solution, which we saw the video for already. But uh, again, just um, all I'm doing here is taking this uh, badge reader. I live in Phoenix now. If you and I parked in uh, parking uh, before I came here, and in going in, you see this exact reader uh, on the pole. I'm going to have to mess around with it, see if I get free parking at the airport. Just kidding. Um, but th this literal exact reader and it's for so you don't have to get out of your car and so you could just put your arm out the window and from a couple feet away uh, badge into a system and that's what we're looking at here. And again all I'm doing is tapping into the same output that you would run to the controller when it's telling a badge number that it saw and I'm just recording it. Um, extremely easy, extremely uh, effective uh, solution for doing this type of thing. And I write everything new. Uh, I, the code I'll be releasing, it's not on the website now, it will be by the end of the day. Um, not that you need it anyway, but I put in decoding 26 bit badges, 33 bit, 34 bit, 35 bit into what they are. Technically, all you need is that hexadecimal version um, to make a clone copy, um, but just for uh, making it nice. And that's all in the text file. Missile switch on the back, just because it's cool. And, and practical. Only a foot by a foot and an inch deep. Fits in most things you would want. Now again the, um, the thing that I gave out to you guys today and that I'll be making available for the people who weren't fortunate enough to get up to the front of the room quick enough um, is I designed this solution in fritzing. Uh, how many people here are familiar with fritzing? Yeah. It's just a, uh, it's a free uh, nice product for uh, designing these kind of custom solutions. It's what you see on the right there. Um, and in this it has a, I designed it in that and it has, you can export it to a file 
that you could send away to a company that prints circuit boards um, and they will send you that circuit board there. Um, for this many that I got, it, if you get them in bulk, it's like a two dollars a card. Uh, if you get just one, it's about thirty bucks, um, and you can send it to anybody to print it out. So you can now take this, um, take your one that I gave you, or go online and download this. Then go and buy um, an Arduino from Radio Shack or Amazon. I'm going to release a parts list. Uh, the micro SD card writers from Spark Fun. Uh, you can order all these things and have them in, in a day. Uh, they're relatively cheap. Uh, all of the pieces are cheap. I will note that I bought uh, this, this reader on eBay. So I went on eBay and bought this long distance reader. Uh, that's the most expensive part. Uh, this is the best one that they have. So I think on eBay it's about like 470 bucks. Which isn't that, I mean, it's not that bad considering. You can take this, uh, the, the great thing about this PCB is it's tapping in this Wigan protocol. You could take this and put it in any reader. So you can get the model one lower than that for maybe a hundred bucks and maybe it'll only get a foot instead of up to three feet. Um, and you could just plug it in just the same and it'll work just fine. But uh, all the rest of the parts are cheap. And the simple structure is it's basically two inputs and two outputs. It's taking in the batteries and the output from the actual reader and outputting it to the screen and to the SD card uh, is what it boils down to. Any questions about this so far? Yeah, so uh, something I'm going to get into. Um, uh, this tool is, you're gonna, uh, I'm going to get into attacking readers uh, in a minute, but it can have some other, I'll, I'll get into that when we get into readers here in a second. Um, and uh, what, again, this is just this weekend protocol. Basically, the card sings out 26 to 37 ones and zeros. Uh, it out, the reader outputs data one and data zero. If it was a zero, it sends a pulse on zero. If it was a one, it sends it on that. It's just a simple output that we're tapping into. Um, in doing these badge systems, there are two main brands of this low frequency proximity card technology. There's the normal, technically HID bought the other company, so they're technically all HID. Uh, but you have uh, HID uh, prox and Indala prox are the two uh, kinds you normally see. And this is the HID prox long distance reader. Um, you can take this card and also plug it into the Indala long distance reader. So if you get this car, uh, the PCB and the two long distance readers, you're covered for every badge that there is pretty much for physical security. Um, if you put this in your uh, uh, bag and go by the local Starbucks of the building you want to break into and you notice that you're not picking up any badges, it's probably, it's probably Indala instead of HID. So just go back home and grab the other one and sub them out. Like the, the lies there. So one thing about Indala, Indala uh, proven secure. Indala is supposed to be better off um, and until recently it actually wasn't that easy to do. I worked with some people to come up with the um, Indala clone uh, feature. But um, basically Indala was a competitor company of HID. Uh, they also made this technology. They got bought and they're the same company now. Um, but all they're doing instead of singing out the, uh, the ones and zeros, they're doing a little bit of obfuscation. Uh, which is repeatable um, and we'll see that uh, if you actually have the Indala reader which we're doing, it does all the decoding for you anyway. So if you're actually using an Indala reader, um, you can get around all that anyway. Um, so and we see here, this is the Proxmark again. Um, when I was doing this pen test, there, it was an Indala system and I went on the Proxmark and there was a HID clone but there was no Indala clone. So I stole the badge information and then I couldn't do anything with it. Um, I was like, you know, it's not doing me any good. I can't break into the building still. So I worked with some people on the Proxmark uh, 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 bulletin board and they put out this Indala clone. So now you can take the information and just like we saw in the video, write it and create a fake version. That's a fake version of an Indala card. So some people tell you, I, we have Indala and that's more secure. Uh, most people who've bought Indala are under the impression that it is more secure and it is not. Um, it's just as easy to, to break now. Um, one last piece with it, with these Arduinos. Just for simplicity's sake, I'm just writing everything to a text file on a micro SD card. Uh, there's tons of other things that I'm going to play around with that you could uh, easily add on to an Arduino based system like this. So maybe um, over Bluetooth it could send me every badge that it reads and I could read it on my phone as I'm walking by people in Starbucks. Or even uh, uh, hook it up with cellular service to uh, leave it near a building or something like that and have it text message me. 
uh, any cards that it sees as people walk by. Uh, all this stuff is, would be extremely easy to do uh, given this setup to add on these existing modules. Um, so there's all kinds of cool things that you could, you could do and, and uh, run with this. Um, I don't want to spend any much time on this forward channel stuff but uh, I've seen <laughs> drop a no eaves Mr. Gandalf. Uh, basically the limitation in distance um, is due to powering the card and I've seen some uh, PhD papers and things like that talking about where uh, if you do it passively if you let the real reader on the front door of, of wherever people are going power that card and you just wait for the signal afterward and listen to the saying of the 26 to 37 ones and zeros, you can get much further distance. Um, and I saw that uh, in Chris Pagan's talk, he even mentioned it having a passive mode, and he uh, claimed that he'd gotten up to 10 feet. Um, uh, this tool never got released, obviously. Uh, and I don't know, if anyone's aware, I'm not aware of any tool out there uh, that actually does this type of attack. But it is something to consider. Um, if distance is your thing and this isn't getting it close enough um, that people might be doing. Copying the card. Uh, what we saw in that video, um, so on step two, these are all the, those were all the tools that we used to steal the badge information as well as do some other cool things. Uh, actually making the copy of the card, um, it was not a blank card. You can get blank cards uh, but what that was was a T55X7 card. So these things you could program and they simulate not only the data but also the behavior. So if I had an Indala card, it wouldn't work on this reader. And if I had a head card in front of an Indala reader, it wouldn't work. Those two technologies don't work. But these programmable cards, you could program them to act like an Indala card or program them to act like a head card. So they can simulate the behavior and the data of any type of card. So they're kind of your universal key that you want to have for creating fake versions of cards. And you buy them uh, online. Um, one note is uh, my slides, the note sections are usually like a white paper. Every link to everything you would want to know about that uh, it will be in the, the notes section of the slides and there's a number of places where you could buy these um, that have links for there for a couple dollars each. Um, and again there's two main types of technology we would want to clone, HID uh, prox and Indala prox and there's two single commands that once you have the stolen information you can clone that to a fake badge and be breaking the buildings. So let's say that everybody started getting RFID blocking wallets um, and purses and things like that and we couldn't sniff it anymore but we still wanted to break in. There's a number of cool things out there for attacking the readers um, uh, and the controllers directly. Uh, there's a bunch of tools out there that people have released where you just you know go up to the front door when no one's around maybe late in the night, pop the, pop the lid off of the reader and you know do things with it, tamper things with it. Uh, dump information off of it such as stored keys for the, the more secure badge systems and um, uh, brute forcing as uh, someone mentioned. So uh, one of the things that we saw, there's a tool called the Gecko um, that came out a few years ago but this is doing a man in the middle attack and technically I didn't design, I didn't design this uh, circuit board for this purpose but I thought about it afterwards. Um, Essentially what I'm doing is I'm taking this and putting it in a reader and it's tapping into the output for the purposes of I bought my own reader. You could just as easily take this and with a couple modifications um, go to the front door of the building you want to break into maybe at four in the morning, pop the lid off and insert this into the reader and have it sit there all day as people badge into the front door um, it's tapping in and just recording all the badges that are coming through maybe using the cell phone service text messaging you uh, badge stuff so you don't have to keep going back and checking it. But uh, you can actually use this um, in the same fashion as this gecko tool as a man in the middle tool to sit there and collect badge information inside the actual real reader of the facility that you're targeting. Um. Also besides doing things like that, there's a whole presentation on this so I won't go into it but um, that uh, Brad uh, Antonio, which I'd, I'd probably just butcher his last name, so I uh, apologize uh, in advance. But Brad from McAfee, uh, the same guy who created that Prox Brute uh, software, the custom firmware uh, that I talked about uh, earlier, um, he also has a, a presentation that came out last year, 
and he has a, uh, a project with tons of scripts for doing all sorts of interesting things um, with Arduinos as well where you are going up to a reader and uh, attacking it directly. So if you wanted to brute force, the reader reads the information and then sends it in that format to the controller. Well if you plugged in directly, you could just start sending uh, badge numbers yourself directly to the controller to brute force badge numbers a lot faster than if you did it over the air. Um, and he has a number of scripts for doing uh, those exact types of things um, and attacking uh, readers and controllers directly. Um, and there's all sorts of uh, interesting things you could do with that. And he gets five IDs a second instead of one um, uh, as you can see there. So I would recommend uh, checking out those links and, and seeing his presentation uh, on the uh, attacking the, the readers. So we covered step one and step two. You stole the information and you created a fake badge and now you went into a building. Uh, now besides walking around um, and acting like you worked there, uh, you probably want to avoid being physically present uh, as much as you can. You want to minimize that amount of time that you're there. So the most effective thing you could do is plant some kind of back door uh, that will maintain a presence um, and their internal network that you're going for so that you don't have to stay there. And how many people here are familiar with the poem plug? Most people. Um, it's really, you know, starting to catch on in the last year or two. And this is just something that you can hide uh, in a conference room or an empty cube, um, plug in the network and it will phone home to you uh, and it will be like your own personal VPN uh, into the internal network of whatever company that you broke into. Um, they had the original one uh, and now they, they're coming out with some really cool additions um, with the power phone there. I mean it looks pretty legitimate. But they are pretty hefty price tags of uh, $1,000 and $1,500 uh, for these things. So with that I also recommend instead you're seeing uh, a lot of people are starting to use Raspberry Pis and, and releasing images uh, for this to basically do the same exact thing but for $35 instead of $1,500. Um, and we actually see it, uh, many people here are familiar with the Raspberry Pi? I'm assuming probably a lot, good amount. Um, this is in a case, it's just this small, just something that you can hide somewhere. It's a fully functional PC and a single board. Um, and you just put the operating system on on the SD card here. People are releasing images, uh, including the people that make the, the Pwn plug um, from Pony Express. They had the Raspberry Pwn. There's also the Rogue Pi or the Pwn Pi. So there's a lot of research out there. So you could buy this for $35 and get yourself a nice little backdoor device um, pretty quickly uh, for cheap and fast. Uh, that's, I like that one probably the best. Somebody took an old uh, laptop uh, charger that they had sitting around and they just hollowed it out and uh, put the, uh, they noticed the Raspberry Pi fit in there exactly uh, and you know turned it into a uh, just an extra power thing laying around that's actually a back door. Little extra touches uh, go a long way. You got the, you can walk in the door, you have the appearance of legitimacy, you, you got in the door. Um, some of the things you could do at this point is get, uh, the number one thing I'd recommend is get fake polo shirts made. If you're wearing a polo shirt of the company that you're breaking into, uh, it seems to just has people eyes glaze over and you look like you belong there. Um, for this particular uh, assessment that I was doing for this electric utility, um, I had uh, someone from our company uh, call up and try to get uh, these polo shirts made um, and there we were going to just use the logo from their website. And we actually have a template from the last event you guys threw uh, for your polo shirts. Do you want to just use those? And we're like, yeah, sure. So they gave us actual legitimate polo shirts that that company uses. Uh, made it even easier. Um, so uh, also uh, you saw these badges are just plain, the ones we're writing to. Uh, on eBay you can get pretty decent badge uh, label uh, printers and things like that so that if you have a picture of someone's badge um, you would just take it in Photoshop and actually laminate it on the card to give yourself that extra uh, sense of uh, legitimacy. So someone's eye on your card um, you know will go over easy. And then uh, lock pick guns for anything you might find. Um, uh, just little badge accessories, things like that. Um, uh, some people in our company like the HD pen cam for you know super spy walking around and uh, recording the video as they've broken into a place. They make for terrible videos. They're usually bouncing around and um, they're almost unwatchable because it's you know if you ever had a pen in your thing. So some people like those sort of things. Uh, and in all honesty, 
keep it simple. Um, I just use my iPhone. No one looks out of place walking around like this. And if you're just recording video. No one's going to question like what is that guy up to? I'm on my iPhone. What do you think I'm up to? Um, so I and the iPhone 5 has one of the best cameras that I've ever seen. So you know keep it simple. Uh, if you want to go the uh, James Bond route you can get the spy pen. Um, finally defenses. The one thing that uh, most talks uh, typically gloss over. Um, <laughs> avoid being probed. Get yourself one of those fancy hats. Um, so most of these products that are out there, 80 percent of the products that are out there were bought 20 years ago and they're completely insecure and it's recognized. Now maybe you are a huge conglomerate that has 100,000 employees and that's 100,000 badges that you would need to do and you know tons of doors and multiple buildings in multiple countries and it's not really realistic to migrate to a more secure solution at least not in any reasonable time frame. Now if you're a smaller company I recommend looking at the contactless smart cards, the high frequency stuff, the newer products that are out there that can do challenge response, um, authentication with the reader and uh, use encryption and things like that. It's not just singing out 26 ones and zeros. Um, if you're a small company you might be able to do that. It's something you want to get on your radar but if you're not or if you know uh, what you can do in the meantime there are plenty of things. So you can use um, badge readers that have uh, pin codes or biometric uh, things as well so that even if I walk by you in Starbucks and I picked up your badge number I still don't have all the information I need to be able to break into the building. Um, on the software side you could do anomaly detection. There's plenty of uh, software out there now for those badge systems. So if I show up at 8 in the morning for work every day uh, in building A and all of a sudden at 4 in the morning I'm you know badging in at some building I've never been into uh, or something like that, you could have it set off alarms and you know notify someone at a, at a security desk to take a look at that. Also uh, the RFID protective sleeves. Um, I'll get into that in a second but the, these sleeves that you could put your, your badges in or wallets or things like that, those are great and that's what I would recommend. Um, about half of them don't work. Half of them are just they're getting over on you. But I just, they just bought old wallets and put a label on it saying RFID blocking and sold them to people. Um, so it's kind of hit and miss. So what I would recommend is before you buy 100,000 of them for your employees for a large organization that you get samples and you actually test it out with these tools to make sure that it's not just you know blowing smoke that they actually do work. Um, and what else? Uh, also when you're outside uh, getting those physical pictures to be able to print on badges, tell your employees not to be wearing their badges out on them when they're outside of the company facilities. And, and prominent view. Take a picture with your iPhone and that's how I printed out labels of you know uh, what the badge looks like. Um, for the as people secure the cards protecting the readers themselves uh, using these security screws that you could buy things like that so that I can't just use a normal screwdriver and pop the lid off your reader on the door in a second or two. You know it may at least make it a little more difficult with some of by getting security screws and things like that. And also depending on what readers you have, some of the readers have tampered attack mechanisms in them. So that if somebody's messing around with the wires in there or trying to plant a man in the middle device in there or something like that, that it will send a tamper detect uh, message to the, you know, to the person, security guard, letting them know that something's going on. And then um, you know, having everything monitored with uh, uh, security cameras so that you know, if all of a sudden at four in the morning you get an alert saying someone's tampering with the reader, you can quickly pull it up and have forensic evidence and see if somebody was trying to take one of these PCBs I just gave out to you and stuck it in a uh, in your reader somewhere. Um, uh, one of our guys uh, is from Scotland. Um, sounds just like Sean Connery, very, very charming guy. Um, and he got his green card. And you could see there that it, it clearly says keep your green, green cards now have, everything's going to RFID. Green cards have RFID in them uh, now. And, it, you know, this US government approved, stamped, and sealed approved uh, badge, you know, keep it in this at all times to prevent uh, communication with this badge over RFID and uh, we tested it and it doesn't work at all. It's literally just a piece of paper. Um, I, I don't know how much money these guys made selling this to the federal government for every green card. Um, but it doesn't work at all. And it's important that um, we had a bunch sent to us to test out and it seemed like 50-50, random. They all look the same for the most part. Some of them I put it in the badge, hold it in front of my reader, the number comes up. Some of them it actually box it. So before you buy them in bulk, test the product out using tools like this. Um, don't, don't assume just because it's a, we sold them to the federal government. Don't assume that they work. Um, 
And that is it. Any questions? Thank you very much, everybody, for coming out. Hopefully, um, uh, if you go to the Bishop Fox website, by the end of today, uh, it'll be up there. Arduino code, the diagrams, um, you know, everything you would need to get up and running to do this yourself.